Every gardener knows that compost tea can give plants a boost, but here's the truth. Not all compost teas are created equal. Some barely wake up microbes, while others overflow with living energy that transforms soil almost overnight. The difference often comes down to what you feed those microbes. And there's one ingredient, cheap and overlooked, that can turn an ordinary brew into a microbe-rich powerhouse that worms simply can't resist. That ingredient is molasses. Today we'll uncover why molasses belongs in your compost tea, how it works on a microbial level, and how to use it the right way to create a living, breathing soil ecosystem that thrives long after the tea is poured. At its core, compost tea is simply a liquid extract of compost that is aerated and brewed to multiply the beneficial organisms inside it. On its own, compost contains an incredible variety of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and nematodes. But when steeped in water, these organisms need food to keep multiplying. Without food, the microbial explosion you want in your tea just doesn't happen. Molasses provides that fuel. Molasses is essentially concentrated sugar from sugarcane or sugar beet processing. It's rich in simple carbohydrates, trace minerals, and small amounts of organic compounds that bacteria consume rapidly. When you add molasses to compost tea, you're giving soil microbes a feast. They eat, reproduce, and spread at a rate that turns your tea into a thriving microbial soup. This living brew, when applied to your garden, feeds not just your plants, but also the worms, fungi, and entire soil food web. The magic of molasses is in how fast it wakes microbes up. Compost microbes, especially aerobic bacteria, thrive on sugars. When they sense the presence of molasses, they begin multiplying at exponential rates. In a properly aerated tea, this means billions of bacteria within hours. These bacteria then become food for higher-level soil organisms like protozoa, which in turn release nutrients in plant-available forms. This chain reaction has another effect. It produces scents and signals that earthworms detect. Worms are naturally drawn to areas with high microbial activity because those zones promise easy nutrient-rich food. By pouring molasses-fed compost tea onto soil, you essentially send an invitation to worms telling them, this is where the food is. Once worms arrive, they aerate, digest organic matter, and deposit castings that are richer than any store-bought fertilizer. To make molasses compost tea, start with the basics, high-quality finished compost. The compost should smell earthy and be free of foul odors because foul smells often mean anaerobic conditions, which are not what you want to multiply. Fill a 5-gallon bucket with non-chlorinated water, leaving a few inches at the top. Chlorine can harm microbes, so if tap water is your only option, let it sit uncovered for 24 hours to off-gas. Add 2-3 to three cups of compost in a mesh bag or old pillowcase, submerging it in the water. This bag acts as a microbial tea bag. Next, add 1-2 to two tablespoons of unsulfured blackstrap molasses. This specific type of molasses is ideal because it is minimally processed and still contains minerals like iron, calcium, and potassium. The most important step is aeration. Compost tea should always be actively aerated to encourage the growth of aerobic microbes, the good ones that thrive in oxygen. Place an aquarium pump with air stones into the bucket and let it bubble continuously. Over the next 24 to 36 hours, the water transforms into a frothy, microbe-rich brew. The smell should be sweet and earthy, never rotten or sour. If it smells off, it means the tea went anaerobic, likely from lack of oxygen or too much molasses. Once your compost tea is ready, timing and application matter. Apply it to your soil in the early morning or late afternoon to avoid UV damage to microbes. You can use it as a drench by pouring it directly at the base of plants, allowing microbes to infiltrate the root zone where they form symbiotic relationships with plants. Alternatively, you can spray it onto leaves, where beneficial microbes act as a protective shield against pathogens. When your goal is to attract worms, the soil drench is best. Worms detect microbial hotspots underground, and a rich flush of bacteria from molasses tea draws them quickly. Over time, repeating this practice creates worm corridors in your soil, zones where worms naturally congregate. These zones become long-term fertility engines, constantly improving soil texture and releasing plant-available nutrients. It's important to note that molasses primarily fuels bacterial growth rather than fungal growth. If your goal is to build a fungal-dominated soil system, such as for fruit trees or woody perennials, molasses alone may not be enough. 
Fungi prefer complex carbohydrates like cellulose and lignin, often found in woody materials or oat flour. However, in most vegetable gardens where annuals thrive, a bacterial-leaning soil system is ideal, making molasses a perfect addition. That said, compost tea recipes can be adjusted. For a more balanced brew, you can add a small amount of kelp meal or humic acid alongside molasses. This gives both bacteria and fungi something to grow on, resulting in a more diverse microbial population. For most raised beds and backyard plots, however, simple molasses-based teas provide exactly the kind of microbial activity that boosts growth and draws worms in droves. Gardeners who have tested molasses teas often report the same observation. Within days of applying it, worms appear in greater numbers. This isn't a coincidence. Worms follow the microbial trails created by bacteria-rich zones. Since molasses accelerates bacterial multiplication, it shortens the time between application and worm attraction. Over weeks and months, repeated applications of molasses compost tea help worms establish permanent pathways in your soil. Their castings act as concentrated humus, loaded with nutrients, enzymes, and microbial life. This is the ultimate goal of soil health, a living system that sustains itself without constant inputs of store-bought fertilizer. Molasses becomes not just a microbe booster but a worm magnet that transforms the structure and fertility of your soil. As powerful as molasses can be, it must be used carefully. Adding too much molasses can backfire by fueling anaerobic bacteria, the kind that create foul smells and harm roots. The key is moderation. A tablespoon or two per five gallons is plenty. Aeration is equally non-negotiable. Without enough oxygen, molasses quickly tips the brew into anaerobic territory. Another mistake is storing compost tea for too long. The brew is alive, and just like fresh bread or yogurt, it has a peak window of vitality. Once it's bubbled for 24 to 36 hours, apply it immediately. If you leave it sitting, the oxygen levels drop, and the microbes either die off or shift toward less beneficial populations. Fresh is always best when it comes to microbial teas. Molasses compost tea is not a magic bullet but a tool within a larger soil care strategy. When combined with mulching, cover crops, and organic matter additions, it amplifies microbial populations and accelerates the natural processes that build humus. Think of it as jump-starting the soil engine. Every time you apply it, you're not just feeding plants, you're feeding the invisible community that makes soil alive. Worms, bacteria, protozoa, and fungi all interact in a cycle that produces fertility far beyond what any bagged fertilizer can offer. Molasses and compost tea is one of the simplest yet most profound tricks for gardeners aiming to revive their soil. It turns an ordinary brew into a microbial feast, draws worms from every corner of your yard, and helps build a living system that sustains plant growth year after year. When done right, it's low-cost, highly effective, and rooted in sound soil biology. If this guide gave you new ideas for your garden, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with fellow gardeners who want healthier soil and thriving plants. And make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more deep dives into the simple but powerful methods that bring soil back to life. The garden you want tomorrow begins with the microbes you feed today.